And welcome to Many Voices, Many Visions. I'm your host, Norma Holland. This week, a look at a quiet killer called diabetes. You may have heard about our nation's rising problem with the disease. It's affecting a growing number of people, young and old. It affects every ethnic group, but it's hitting the African-American and Latino populations especially hard. Why is this, and what can be done about it? My next guest tackled that question head on. My thanks to Dwayne McCulley for being with us here today. Dwayne wrote a book called Death to Diabetes, How an Ex-Diabetic Beat Diabetes Despite a Coma and 1337 Blood Glucose Level. Welcome, Dwayne. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Good now, to be here. I know a little bit about diabetes. <laughs> it runs in my family. So to see that 1337 right. blood glucose level, for those of you at home who are watching, that's enough to kill a person. Exactly. That's yeah. way too right. high. Oh yeah. Um, first of all, tell us your story. Um, mm. You, 2000, you're, you're an engineer. Yes, I was an engineer working uh, at uh, Xerox Corporation. And um, one day I couldn't uh, move. I woke up one morning and uh, I, I couldn't move. And uh, had this funny feeling in my body. And this voice said, you better call 911. <laughs> so I did. And they broke down the door, took me to the hospital. And when I came out of the coma, they said, Mr. McCauley, you are lucky to be alive. Uh, we got some good news. We got some bad news. Good news is you're alive. We don't even know how you survived this. How long were you in a coma? Do you remember? Um, or did they tell you? Or? No. Uh, I don't know if it was okay. just for a day or a sure. couple okay. days. Uh, but they said, Dwayne, you had a special type of coma. I said, ooh, special. <laughs> special meaning good. Not good. Special <laughs> meaning bad. <laughs> they said, well, Dwayne, you had what is known as a non-catotic hyperglycemic hyperosomal coma. And you also had uh, hypertriglyceridema, and uh, you had deep vein thrombosis, DVT. And I'm um, Which listening. is a blood clot, isn't it? Right, exactly. DVT, I've heard that's especially dangerous. Oh, yeah. 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 I had two blood clots, like threatening blood clots, and uh, they said, well, at some point, uh, you're going to have to go on kidney dialysis. Your eyes are already failing, so you're gonna, you'll be looking forward to that surgery. And um, we may have to you know, take your legs. <laughs> and I said, take them where? <laughs> <laughs> and the doctor said, you know, amputate. I said, oh, my goodness. Yeah, so they got my attention big time. And, um, and as I mentioned to you earlier, I was somewhat fortunate that my mother um, came to Rochester to take care of me. Uh, my daughter left her job in Pittsburgh to come take care of me. Uh, because for whatever reason, they knew, they somehow knew, this is bad. Dad's never been sick. You know, something, something, uh, something is amiss. And I tell people all the time, well, Dwayne, how did you how did you recover so quickly? <laughs> I said, my mother came, my daughter, and my sister. I had three women in my house <laughs> telling me what to do. <laughs> Which yeah. meant you were compliant, oh, I'm yeah. sure. If you knew yeah. my mother, okay. you, you would understand, yeah, ma, yes, ma. I, I love the story of your mother and how she came to your to your rescue almost right. because yep. it was because of your mother that you changed the way you started to eat. Now, mm -hmm. here you are at home after right. the hospital. Right. You're taking all this medication, having to give yourself insulin shots, four shots a, yep. four shots a day, right. and your mother said, you know, you need to change the way you eat. Right. And I understand now, for those of you watching, this book deals with, of course, the different stages of type 2 diabetes. And that's an important distinction to make mm -hmm. because type 2 diabetes is the adult onset, correct? Exactly. That's what you get exactly. when you get older and you haven't been taking care of yourself. Right, exactly. Yeah, but it's now starting to affect children. It is, yeah, absolutely, it's now young people. To affect children. So this yeah. book, your book really is a way for people who have this type of diabetes mm -hmm. to, in a way, reverse the effects yes, uh, can, and live a healthier yep. life without needing medication. Exactly. All right. They can decide exactly how they want to take control of this disease. They can control it with the drugs, uh, they can control it with diet and exercise, and that's stage four. If they now decide to go further, they can actually reverse the complications. Now I can hear the doctors out there now screaming, <laughs> you can't reverse diabetes! Um, but I looked at medical science. See, I'm, a, I'm an engineer. I got a background in biochemistry. So I looked at, the, at medical science, the pathology of type 2 diabetes, the pathogenesis, the etiology, um, the epidemiology. I took a look at all these different areas of medical science to get a good understanding of type 2 diabetes at the cellular level. And as an engineer, <laughs> once you have this insight, then you can apply engineering methodologies to medical science. Which is what you did with your disease and your illness right. uh, when you were home. You had a lot of time mm -hmm. 
uh, on your hands and you looked at your disease from a scientific level as right. an engineer. Yep. Um, and so you, bega you began to change the way you ate, mm -hmm. thanks to mom. Yeah, mom. The word see, Brussels sprouts changed, comes to yeah. mind. Yeah, she, she, she made, Norma, she made me eat Brussels sprouts. <laughs> as, and as here you are, punishment. a grown man. Okay. Yeah, a grown man. As punishment. Now you gotta understand the dynamic here because my daughter's looking, wow, dad isn't talking back. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, because mom's here, that's right. Funny. Yeah, and, um, and uh, you know, we grew up in a small town. My father had a garden, so we always ate good food. Uh, I didn't know it was good food at that time. Sure. From the garden. Well, sure. Uh, my uncle had a big farm out in the country. So <laughs> my mother said, we're going back to the basics. And you're going to eat broccoli and Brussels sprouts, spinach. Now, those happen to be the three vegetables I hate. <laughs> <laughs> and mom was going to make you eat them. Right. That was her way of showing I I'm in control. <laughs> and she was. Yes. Yeah. Thank goodness, because I know that the, one of the, the big part, uh, a big part of your plan and the way that you got you back to health uh, was through what you ate. Yes. And that's so important. But you also mm -hmm. combine uh, exercise. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get into that just a little bit. But first, mm -hmm. let's take a look at, for people who are watching, uh, blood glucose and insulin levels. Those words you'll hear a lot when yes. it comes to diabetes. Exactly. If we could just show that. Um, if you look at the screen in blue, a non-diabetic, explain that, yes. the, the, the uh, chart in blue, please. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, engineers, we just love charts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you made this up. You should. You made it. <laughs> we love it. And so that chart on the, on the left, the blue chart, it shows um, in a, in a non-diabetic's body, um, the glucose level rises and the insulin levels rise. And this is normal when you eat food. But within two hours after consuming the meal, your blood glucose level will return to normal. Blood glucose is the sugar in your blood. That's the sugar, yeah. Okay. Exactly. And on the right-hand side, the red chart, now in a, in a type 2 diabetic's body, again, their blood glucose, blood glucose levels will rise. The insulin levels also rise. But after two hours, they do not return to normal. This is very important for type 2 diabetics to understand that the cells of their body are defective. Mm -hmm. They're not able to pull in the glucose. Your, door, your, 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 your cells have these little garage doors that open and close. In a diabetic's body, the garage doors are stuck. They're damaged, so they can't open to pull in the glucose. And in my workshops, when I teach type 2 diabetics the essence of this disease, and I don't mean to try to oversimplify this, but once they begin to understand, oh, uh, my cells are broke. They're defective. Huh. Is there some way to fix them? Yeah, there is. Which is <laughs> what a lot of people would argue uh, with you yeah. about and say, once you have this disease, yep. there's no way to can't, reverse can't it. Or to, it. Yep. But, you know, I've heard of people who, um, you know, through diet and exercise have been able to uh, stop taking medicine. Right. Um, yeah. And have stopped needing to take um, mm -hmm. Uh, or even give themselves insulin. Yep. Okay, so um, we should be careful though to point out people who have type 1 diabetes mm -hmm. who oh, are yeah, insulin that's dependent yeah, that's cannot entirely different. reverse yep. their condition. Exactly. Type 1 is an autoimmune disease and is an entirely different disease. In fact, they should have named type 2 diabetes something else like metabolic syndrome mm -hmm. X. By giving it similar names, it causes confusion. Okay, so type yeah. two is the one you get exactly. when you know uh, you haven't been taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. It's it, because it, it's progressive, isn't it? Type two, yes. you build up over the years. Yes. Exactly. What are some of the symptoms of type two diabetes? <sighs> um, uh, frequent urination, uh, fatigue, um, uh, you know, weight gain, high triglycerides, uh, high cholesterol, obviously high glucose levels. Um, and I had all of this, and I had just had a physical three months earlier, but um, the doctor didn't really think there was any real issue. I was on Lipitor. I was taking some medication. And, of course, I thought, I'm fine.